Hi, I've got a 7.3 power stroke. It's leaking oil out of the high pressure pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the high pressure pump off. It's the same procedure. It doesn't matter if we're replacing it or if we're going to reseal it. The reason why I have to take the pump off for this one, it's leaking down here at the bottom. I'm talking about the screw, the, there's like a plug on the side of the pump down there, not the lines but on the bottom down there, there's a plug and it holds a um, check ball in and you can't just unscrew it and put an O-ring on it. It'll hit the um, cylinder head and give us issues. Anytime I have any have a uh, anything with exposed threads, I like to lubricate them. Just helps me from getting binding on the threads and causing issues. I just use a little W40 there. I'm going to remove the uh, intake part of the charge air cooler so I can have better access to the pump to bring it out the back. This nut's a captive nut, and it'll stay on. I just removed the insulator. Now if you move one clamp high and one low, it makes it easier to come on and off. So I can just put it on like this and back down there. So that's the way I take this off. I have the wires pushed back out of the way here. The pump's getting more exposed as we go along. Now to get the high pressure lines off, you need to use a special tool. This is the one I like to use. I get them from shopfreedomracing.com. It works pretty good for me. It's not the one that the book calls for, but I like it with the angle on it to get to both lines. Okay, now to get this in the right spot, we want to push down on the black sleeve. There's actually a metal sleeve inside there that pushes down on the snap ring. So we stick the tool in there, go in all the way, then try to pull this off as straight as you can. It comes off. Sometimes they stick more than that. But the trick is putting this in between there and pulling it off straight in the same way in the one back here. Okay, here we go with the tool installed on the inner one, the one more towards the front take off the one that's towards the back of the engine first makes the tool easier to go on now same thing we'll just push it inside and then pull out work on the hose and get it out so now we have both lines off sorry for the movement I'm trying to hold the camera and do this so now we have both lines off now we'll go after the pump. Okay, to get the IPR valve off, I just use a three-quarter wrench, 
take the nut off here. And I use this snap on inch and an eighth deep with a flex head ratchet and I'll show it to you in a second here. Now this will leak a little bit out if you, I am after an oil leak concern so I already have the valley contaminated. If you were concerned with it then put some rags down which we'll do anyways before I get the pump all the way out because that does leak out quite a bit. So I'll go ahead and move the IPR valve and when you have it out inspect your o-rings the one against here where it seals against the pump and the one up here in the front I'm going to wipe it all off and check and make sure your O-rings are good. This is the setup I use to pull it off. Inch and an eighth deep socket with a snap-on flex ratchet. Works pretty good. Even completely assembled, you can get them out with that setup there. So let's go ahead and get the pump off. Okay, this is my procedure to get the bolt out in front. The drive gear bolt in front of the pump. Take a 16 or 5 8 wrench and loosen the EVP, the tube, the bottom sensor. Loosen the two 8mm bolts in front. Then I'll just take my pry bar and pry the cover off. Okay, to get the front bolt out of it, out of the drive gear, it's 18 millimeter, and you don't have to remove the heated hose. I just did that to get a better shot here, but the um, so anyhow, you don't have to do that. You don't have to remove the heated hose. I use a half inch to a three-inch drive extension with an 18 millimeter socket. One side there and. Break it loose. Now, we, normally with a hard yank, it'll come out, but you may have to have somebody hold the crank um, bolt just to put the proper torque back on it or to remove it. I've never had a problem removing it, but to torque it back on properly, you may want to have somebody hold the crank while you tighten it down. Don't leave it loose. I've, got, I've had a few no starts because of that. Now we'll, we will remove the bolt. One nice thing, the washer that's on these, it's pretty thick and you can't, it should not fit as long as it's a stock washer, it should not fit in between the gear and the front pulley. So if you did drop it, it's not going to go down. There's not enough clearance inside of here to fit. The, um, it's always safe to be careful with it, but I have before had it slide off and it didn't make it all the way down. So that's pretty good thinking on their behalf. They're leaving a thick washer. Still be careful, but if you do drop it, it's not the end of the world. 
At least it has not been for me the time I've done it. So now we have the front loose. Just gotta get the two back bolts and get the pump out. And this is the setup I use to get the front bolt out. Just a cheap old Harbor Freight socket with the uh, extension that starts off half inch to three eighths. And then my snap-on flex ratchet. The angle that it's at right now is like where the turbo would be. Uh, it's in front of the turbo. So it might not be a realistic looking angle, but it's the best one I can try to think of. So I had the camera sitting in front of the turbo looking back at it. Okay, both bolts are out. There's two bolts holding in against the front cover, so now they're out. We go ahead and lift the pump out. Just rock it a little bit. Now it's loose. I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera to show it at a better angle. Let's go ahead and maneuver this around the fuel line and get it out. And there we have the pump out. Now as you see I left the charger cooler hoses on, the fuel bowl all intact, the fuel line on, and I have the pump out. So let's go ahead and uh, show you what I'm talking about resealing this place on the pump. I have the pump off and mounted in a vise. And this is the uh, uh, plug here that we're going to reseal. And the reason why you don't, why you have to be careful and keep it facing this way is because there's a shaft on it that holds a check ball in it. So I'll go ahead and pull it out and show you what I'm talking about here. There's the, uh, where I was talking about with the shaft, and there's the check ball inside. If you were to turn the pump sideways, um, or upside down, or whatever you want to say, any angle, you can lose that check ball, and then you have a nose start. So it's really important to keep the pump mounted like this, so it does not, the check ball does not come out. So I'll go ahead and reseal that, and also reseal the uh, oil lines here, and this plug here in the back and reinstall it. Now on the pump I just use a uh, tacky type glue so I can glue the uh, gasket on and it won't drop off when I go to install the pump. So I can just glue the tack the gasket to the pump. Okay with the gasket all glued on or tacked on there I should say I'll just lower the pump down here. Work it around the fuel line. and just guide it in and with that in I'll just reach through the front right here and feel and I can put the gear on and once I have the gear on I go ahead and install my bolts and torque it down the front bolt there, the torque is 96 foot-pounds, and the back bolts, the two smaller ones, are 18 foot-pounds.